Hey yo, it's Cash on the Hood with Jason Sauer and my main man Steven Sickles. I'm here with TJ and Colin. But before we get to them, of course, we gotta like, share, subscribe. I need you guys to please do what it takes to keep this show rolling. Cash on the Hood needs and loves you, and we really do appreciate it. I'm like getting freaked out because I have such great guests today, right, Steven? Yes, sir. We got uh a TikTok famous guy and a guy that's trying to be TikTok famous. That's right. <laughs> nice. That's right. All right, so go ahead and introduce yourself. Start here with TJ. Uh, my name is TJ McCullough uh, from Cumberland, Maryland. Oh, I'm uh, my fault. I'm Colin Ray. I'm a prison TikToker from Pennsylvania. <laughs> so you two don't know each other. TJ is a demolition derby promoter. Okay. So okay. he actually puts on the whole event. Um, and the one coming up at Fayette County down by me. Yeah. That, Dead Man Derby is a show that he's putting on. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm so. the dead man. Okay. <laughs> nice, nice. So, yeah, they were saying you're real big into horror and stuff, right? Absolutely. Uh, classic horror, survival mm-hmm. horror has always been my jam, and I just like that darker side of stuff. I yeah. don't necessarily come off that way. Right. But, like, it's like my alter ego kind of just shines out, and I, I get to be a different person. Right. That's awesome. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was trying to get Colin to come down to the show there in maryland but uh that didn't work out but it was he throws a great show yeah the, the horror the, the horror movie theme is something that the derby drivers and people in general seem to like gravitate towards you know and you said that's in april the next one yeah that one's in april that, that one's kind of geared a little bit differently it's co- kind of more of an attitude we try to present with that one we kind of try to steal the vibe of like fighting for your life kind of like that um like the show no yeah. mercy attitude and that one, that one's a little different than with the buried alive. I mean, just even the name, the Halloween, yeah. the time. Yeah. You know, everything we do with the decorations is all about the presentation of the whole feeling. Right. So, will you be doing that again, like around Halloween this year? Absolutely. Yeah, I'll definitely, Absolutely. I'll definitely come one thousand percent. One thing that separates him from most promoters is he's a huge wrestling fan. Okay. <laughs> okay. So when you say the no mercy and the buried alive and the Every time I think of TJ's Derby, he's like, I'm just still waiting for the cage match to be there. When <laughs> no I doubt. No like, doubt. So awesome. it's, it's more than just a Derby. If you sit there and pay attention, I don't get to sit in the stands much, but when I have, you're getting more of a feel to it. It's like more of a show than just a Derby. Mix of both. Yes. Yeah, so we. I, I've been to a thousand demolition derbies, a thousand shows, and there's a lot of downtime. And that downtime is is that that can make or break a show, right? Right. Like you don't want a, an artist to come on stage do three or four songs, and then it's another 45 minutes before the next artist comes. Like, right. what's going on in between that to entertain me? Why Why do I want to sit here and wait for the next performance? So I try to do things in between each heat or any downtime to to get the crowd involved, uh, the right. entire family involved, right? Stone Cold stuttered one of our Canadian friends <laughs> last year in the middle of in between heats. That I wish yeah. I wish I would have been able to post that one because that got a lot of views. Right. Yeah, are, are are you into uh, wrestling? Do you, are you familiar with this? So I'm familiar with wrestling. Like it was, it was something I watched like when I was younger. You know what I mean? But like as as I got older, it's just something that I didn't really find time for. Honestly, especially after going to prison and stuff, it was just they like, didn't watch wrestling in prison. Like a, like some people did, but I was just more like football, basketball, mm-hmm. baseball. That's like what I've, but that's always been what I've like the stuff that I've played. You know what and I mean? Wrestling fell off for me too once I became an adult. I won't lie, like the whole, Back with the Stone Cold, the Rock, the the cane with the mask, the red yeah, mask, right. Undertaker, like that. That was the good days when you saw um, pay per view where you might get to see uh, what was it, the bra and panty matches and stuff. When I was younger, I'd like to watch. <laughs> yeah, that, that was, was a different time. Yeah, I don't think they're. I don't think they're even allowed that kind of stuff now. No, it's much more PC uh, now. I, what I love about wrestling is, and, and I'm a huge sports fan as well, and. What I just love about wrestling is is you just get to be a character. And that's what I mean by when I go to my shows, I'm not T.J. McCullough. I'm this character that I'm putting out right. there for. Like, I'm not the most confident dude in the world, but when I get there, you would never know that because right. I, I just go. I'm just like, it doesn't matter what I do tonight. Nobody can judge me because I'm in character. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, and, absolutely. And that's what I like about it. He said about the, the cane and the mask. It's like I like to wear that mask every once in a while and show people a different side of me. But then be able to take that mask off and relate to people on a different level as well. Absolutely, I get that for sure, <laughs> dude. I love it. No, seriously, that's uh, 
What can we do for Colin? Uh, can we make something for him and uh, buried something. alive? Like or something I'm where down. he comes out of I'm a coffin so or something. <laughs> you know, like we I'm bring him in you. on a coffin or you know, I know you could come up with something, right? Listen, my, my one of my dreams is to be rolling in a hearse and have my crew bring me out in a coffin and they open the coffin and I set up and that's how I arrive to the show. That's nice. cool. Like that's there how I wanna do that's how I wanna do buried alive. That's nice. cool. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm a little freaked out about. I'm a little claustrophobic, so I'm a little freaked out about being in a coffin. Right. So I'd have to like practice like thirty times just to make sure that it opened every time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hell no. No. Right. You wouldn't no, no. I wouldn't like that. Not for like any longer than thirty seconds. Yeah. Like, See, I, I don't. I'm not like super claustrophobic. I don't. I don't <laughs> like. But like, just being in a coffin, I feel like is like a. Because, like, think about it, right? You're in a coffin. If somebody wanted to, they could lock it. You're done. They could put you in the ground. Yep. See, you I'm know what very, I mean? And, like, you can't do fidgety. anything about it. Like, uh, not it that they would, like, but. You can't probably even bring your hands You know what? Up, I take that like, back. Uh, I probably could handle it if you could lock me in there and I could you still use my phone. <laughs> <laughs> my ADD and my fidgeting right. would be, like. If not, uh, my luck no would be a one spider in there. Oh, no, <laughs> see, no, it's a whole different. You brought spiders into the game. That changes everything for me. <laughs> no. No. No, I wouldn't I'd be, be able to breathe at all. Out. No way. You can put me in any situation that I'm that I'm comfortable in, and then you just add a spider, and I'm like, nope, I'm good. <laughs> well, it's gonna be pitch black, so you're just gonna feel something crawling on you. Oh, no, 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 now, you're, no. now you're always gonna think there's a spider. No, no. no. Oh, well, there goes that idea. Right. <laughs> Bugs are the worst. Like I remember this time when we were younger. I came home. I was with my mom. And they were like, I guess like larva or something in like this container of olive oil, but they had come out. It was like a can. Like a big thing with like a top on it, so you couldn't see in it like you can like a normal like olive oil. And my mom was like, "Oh, there was like it was like a centipede or something." She's like, "Oh, there's a centipede on the ceiling." So I got it. And there was another bug, so I oh, got no. it. And then I realized that there, it, like you just like notice like everywhere. It's an infestation. There's like thousands of them, right? Uh, so I'm like, no. it's like late at night. So I'm like, I clean them all up, I kill them all. But the rest mm. of the night, even though there's nothing on me, I know there's nothing on me. I'm just. I'm just feeling them I'm all right. over me. Like, that's yeah, what I mean. Like, like, what's going on? Under it's just my skin. The, <laughs> I can feel it. It's just the worst. Like, oh, I'm good. <laughs> you can go down all sorts of rabbit holes with that kind of stuff because, like, um, when you start learning, like, anatomy and physiology in school, they teach you about, like, the little mites and everything that are on our bodies that we can't see. Yeah. Mm-mm. When you Leg start thinking about that, and whatever, that will freak you out. And you get into the statistics of how many you swallow in your sleep a year, and you don't even know. <laughs> listen, uh, <laughs> I, listen, I've I had, been on that side of TikTok. <laughs> when I was in prison, um, I got scabies, and scabies for anybody listening does not mean you're dirty. What it, it's just a mite that gets in your skin, and if you don't get it cleared up quick, it spreads. So I had this like it was like a clear bump on my finger, and I was like, "What is that?" I was like, "That's crazy." So I popped it. Which I didn't know was like not good for it. So the next yeah. day I had them like a couple more places. So I was like, what the fuck? So I go to medical and they're like, oh, it's a fungus. Here's some cream or whatever. Well, it wasn't a fungus, it was scabies. So next thing I know, I go down like three more times. They're like, it's not scabies, it's not scabies. Until I have them everywhere to the point where I can't sleep without waking up scratching myself. Oh, no. They're everywhere. Mm. In like the worst places you can imagine. Yeah. Right. Everywhere. So finally, I go back down again. I'm like, listen, y'all got to do something for me. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm no doubt. dying. <laughs> so they take all my stuff, wash it, like, in this, like, thing. They give me these pills. Pills don't work. I'm trying to get the cream because the cream is supposed to work. I put the cream on. Use it one time. They're like, use the whole container. I'm like, okay, no, I'm not doing that because it's going to be impossible to get more. So I use, like, 80% of it. All of it goes away. I have, like, a couple more on my finger. I clear that up. Never have it again. But it was the worst yeah. experience. And I had it for weeks. Mm. It wasn't like, oh, I had it for a day and I was itchy. Like, I had this. Sh- oh, it was. It pisses me off just thinking about it right now. Yeah, that's terrible. Like I just remember because you said mites. <laughs> so I was right. like, oh, no. <laughs> it sounds like they didn't take care of you very well, did they? No, 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 no. They don't. <laughs> but, you know what I mean? Can't do anything about it. They pulled my wisdom teeth. They did do that. Yeah? And then my wisdom teeth grew in when I came home. Whoa. Pulled, pulled four molars that they thought were wisdom teeth. Oh, oh my wow. God. They're practicing on you. Yeah. Which didn't end up, <laughs> like, yeah, it was it was crazy. But they've done that so many times where somebody has a cavity and they're like, oh, we got to pull your tooth. 
oh, you need a root canal? No, we'll just pull it. Mm. Mm. Like, people just walking around with missing teeth and shit. It's did, just crazy. Did you get to leave the property to go to the dentist, or the dentist comes to the property? The, the, there's a, a, a jail dentist. Yeah. Yep. Oh, man. That's the one that but, didn't score as high on his <laughs> right? Great. C's get degrees. degrees. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like everything takes so long. Like, they'll... You're supposed to get, like, a cleaning, like, once a year or something, or once every two years or something like that. And I had a filling fallout one night. So I wrote I wrote down there. I was like, hey, I had this filling fallout. And they're like, okay, cool. We'll put you on the list. 18 months. Whoa. 18 months. No, you and, like, it didn't, like, cold water for 18 it, months. It wasn't, it, it wasn't bothering me, thankfully, because when, when I got the filling, like, it had been drilled out the right way. So it was just, like, it was just, like, a gap. Mm-hmm. But it was annoying. Like, there was always, like, cause I like corn chips and Doritos and stuff. There would all be, be a piece it. of Doritos stuck mm-hmm. in it and shit. It was just, yeah, it was, it, medical's not good. Medical's yeah. not good. I used to be able to get out of the jail, though, by, like, I have a, a double-jointed shoulder. But if I, like, make it, like, I can, like, pop it out of place. And it looks like it's dislocated. And, like, they won't do anything for that at the jail. Like, they'll bring you to the hospital. So I was just like, if I was like bored, I just ran and moved. Like my shoulder popped out. They'd take me on a little trip to the to the hospital, sitting there in my jumpsuit, all cuffed up and shit. They'd be like, "What's your pain level?" A nine. They'd be like, Here, "Here's some morphine, thanks, bro." All I, can, all I can see is him like lethal weapon with Mel Gibson, just like throwing his shoulder against the wall yeah. and like popping it out. Like I'm getting out of here for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, prison's boring, huh? Yeah, prison's boring. Well, I mean. <laughs> Subjective. <laughs> I mean, it depends what you're you into. You make it your own. Yeah. <laughs> Some people might like it. <laughs> well, I bet better than a, that coffin scenario. You're like, no yeah. way. You already got me freaked out about that. I was going down a good idea. Like, you know, I mean, like, so when you're getting married, you have two hearse pull up and bride and groom get out of their coffins. Oh my god, That'd I see cool. you. I see you. Well, the first ever buried alive we had, we were really conflicted because. We didn't know how big our show was going to be. And the the property manager comes to me and says, listen, there's another thing going on here, and it's a wedding. And I'm thinking, what we're doing is loud. Like, I, I know bridezillas, right? I mean, but, uh, these, they want their day to be perfect. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> we're going to ruin her day. Big and I'm like, time. I don't know if this can work. They thought about canceling this and everything like that. Turns out it's a goth wedding. Nice. <laughs> it worked perfect. <laughs> it was perfect because they came over and like saw everything. We gave them like tickets to just come over and just kind of hang out with us. But they were all dressed in full glo- goth I vampires. Think we accidentally and stuff. parked a car, me and Jonathan Fur, like in their parking for their wedding. <laughs> 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 like it, it was like a stripped out impala. I think you end up yep, buying it. I ended up getting it <laughs> off me. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, we used our dude, wedding. Plan. Derby would ru- oh, you lucked out because yeah, did luck Derby out. would ruin a wedding. <laughs> Badly. <laughs> oh my god. Badly. Oh my god. Like, do you take this room? room, yep. room? <laughs> <laughs> like even a lot of Derby guys, like their wedding, they're like, ah, we don't want Derby stuff at the wedding. So oh, like yeah. it's really touchy. <laughs> it's probably their old ladies cracking whip. Like I oh, have this. Sure. One, I have this one day for sure. Right. <laughs> Well, I think that was pretty good there, guys, for uh, this one. Uh, so for those of you listening, Cash on the Hood uh, with TJ, Colin, and Steven. Steven's got his revved up garage cast. And, of course, Brian on the decks back there has Cinema Psychos with 262 shows. Thanks for Studio Me for throwing this together and uh, Lipson for hosting our stuff. Again, without you guys like sharing and subscribing, we don't have it. So, cash on the hood. Uh, we got some more episodes coming up. <laughs>